right, welcome back guys. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and of course, what is a Swift UI map app without the map, right? So in this video, we're gonna add our first of two maps to this app. And uh, as you're gonna see, it's actually relatively simple. Uh, we're gonna import MapKit, and then we're gonna use the Swift UI map that comes with MapKit. It's really not that hard to initialize, uh, but the key thing that we're gonna do is then bind it to our view model. This way we can use our view model to control the map. All right, all right, welcome back everyone. Let's actually start building out this locations view now. So, last video we created this list. I did that just because I wanted to make sure we were getting all of our content coming through here. So you should have some content, but we're not gonna actually use this list in our app. So I'm gonna delete the list and instead let's put a Z stack on the screen here and we'll open the brackets. And what we're going to do is actually put a map on the background of this screen. So let's type in map and open the parentheses. And uh, you can see here I'm not actually getting any of the initializers for the map. And that's because the map is actually in map kit. So right now we're just importing the Swift UI framework. Let's also import the map kit framework. Now let's type in map, open the parentheses. And we can see all the initializers here. Now in this app, we're gonna use a coordinate region. That's because we have coordinates for each of our location. We could be just drawing where we want the map based on a rectangle, but we're gonna look and base it on a specific location, basically a specific uh, set of latitude and longitude points. So we're gonna use the coordinate regions and we're gonna use some of this other stuff, annotation items in a second, but let's just get the map on the screen first. So I'm gonna use just this coordinate region completion here. Click enter and now we need to bind to an MK coordinate region. Of course we don't have one of those yet. So up here uh, let's just create an at state private var. Let's call this map region of type MK coordinate region. Let's set this equal to a default starting coordinate region for now. So I'm just going to type in MK coordinate region, open the parentheses, and let's use the center and span. So I'll click enter before these parameters just to put them on separate lines. And the center, we need to give it a center coordinates. So I'm gonna to jump to our locations data service. And for the Coliseum, I have these coordinates already in our app here. So I'm just gonna copy that, go back to our view and paste in our coordinates. And then for our span, let's just create a new MK coordinate span. And let's give it a latitude delta of 0 0.1, latitude longitude delta of 0 0.1 as well. The center is basically just the center location on the map and the span is basically how zoomed in or zoomed out you want the map to be. So 0 0.1 is fairly zoomed in. Now on our map, let's just bind with the money sign map region, click resume. We should now get our awesome map on the screen. Awesome, and we can see that it's already in Rome, and I, I'm assuming that the uh, Colosseum is somewhere right in here. And we can, of course, move and zoom around on the map by default. It's a little laggy in the canvas, but you get the point. All right, first thing I notice is that the map is not going to the edges of the screen, so we want to ignore that safe area. So our map is working, we have it in Rome, but uh, the problem that we have is that we just added this at state map region on this view. But when we go to change which uh, location that we're selected on in our app, all of that logic we wanna put into our view model. So because of that, we actually don't want the map region to be in the view, but rather in the view model, so that the view model can manage which region the app is currently on. So I'm gonna open up the view model side by side here. We don't need this actual canvas for a second. I'm gonna close it. Let's click the plus on the top right here, not the library, but this plus to add a second editor. While I'm clicked on the right side here, I'm going to jump to the definition of locations view model. And I'll close out our navigator just so we can see our two. We have our view here and we have our view model here. All right, so when we initialize our view model, we have an array of locations. So let's put a comment here, all loaded locations. That's what this array is going to be. And of course, when we are clicking around our map, there's only gonna be one location that is actually selected at a time. So the current location that the map is, the current 
uh, center point for the map will be one specific location. So let's create another at published bar. Let's call this map location and will be of type location. So just one location here. All right, so when we initialize our view model, we, we, we get all of our locations here. And then we set up our locations array. This is all of the locations. And then we also want to set up what the current location is. So we'll set self.map location equal to locations dot first. And then I'm going to explicitly unwrap it with the exclamation mark. Now I've talked about this many times when building and teaching. Uh, we should not be explicitly unwrapping anything in our app unless we are absolutely sure it will never fail. So in this app, in this specific example, I know that this locations array, if I jump to it, it's always going to have this data because this data is hard coded in. So I know that this explicit unwrap here is never going to fail because there's always going to be at least one item inside that array. If, however, we were like downloading this from the internet and we we're just getting you know, an array that we didn't know how many items were in the array and we weren't sure if there was actually a first item, then I would not be explicitly unwrapping this. But for the sake of this video and the brevity of code, we're just going to explicitly unwrap this one time. I hope you guys are understanding that. So now we have, let's make a comment here. This will be the current location on the map. And now the only problem is that we are binding to a location, but this map needs to bind to a region, a MK coordinate region. So we're going to create yet another at published var, we'll call this map region, and of type MK coordinate region. And we don't have the MK coordinate region in this file because we also need to import map kit here. So let's make that of type MK coordinate region. And we're going to set this equal to a blank MK coordinate region, open close parentheses. So before we were giving it a default starting value, but here we are just starting it with a blank region. So not an actual location that we want. And then after this gets initialized and after we initialize our map location, we're then going to update the current map region. So let's create a quick private func, call it update map region. Open close parentheses, open the brackets. And when we call update map region, we are going to pass in a location of type location. And then we want to set up our map region. So we'll say map region, set it equal to an MK coordinate region. Open the parentheses, center and span. So let's put these on separate lines. The center is going to be our location dot coordinates. So the coordinates inside that location. And then we need a span just like we had here. So I'm going to take the span that we had here. And every time we update the map region, we're going to use the same span. So up here, I'm just going to create a let map span equals. And then we're going to set it equal to this MK coordinate span with 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 for now. So then this will be our map span. So when we update the map region, it's going to update it to that current location. Of course, we want to do this with animation. So I'll cut it. I'll do it with maybe some, let's do ease in out, open brackets, and then we'll paste in our map region here. So we have our function update the map region. So after we initialize the class, let's then just say self.update map region. And let's also go to the locations dot first. So we're initializing it with a blank region, but pretty much immediately after initializing, so the initializing will finish after here because we've set up all of our items that need to be initialized. And then we can call a function in our class called update map region. So it will change this from a blank region to the current location of whatever that location is. All right, so let's see if it works. So I'm gonna close this on the right side here with this little X. Let's open back up our canvas. All right, so the map is still referencing this map region, but let's instead reference the, uh, let's do money sign VM dot map region. And same thing, except uh, now we're using the one in our view model. So we can get rid of this map region in our view and our view is looking nice and neat.
All right, last thing I want to do before we end this video is actually jump back to our view model one more time. And uh, every time we set the current location on the map, so if we change the location in our code here, so if we go from maybe the first location to the second location, I don't want to have to update the location and then update the map region every single time. That's two different things I would have to update every time. Instead, what we're going to do is only update the map location. And when we update this, we're also going to then update this automatically. So on the current map location, I will add a did set and then open the brackets. So every time we set the value for map location, we're then going to call uh, update map region. And then we're going to pass it into the current map location. All right, so we're going to play around with that in a second, but basically we never need to update this manually again. Instead, we're just going to set the value of map location and that will automatically call this function to update the current region. So if we change this variable, the map should update automatically. We're going to do that in a future video, but I just wanted to get it set up here. All right, that was it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.